Welcome to you all, dear friends, on this very final day of 2023. It is December the 31st, day 365, and we've done it. Congratulations. Ben's doing something here behind me, and uh, we are together once again on this final day. And it is good to be with you. It is good to celebrate another year in the Word together. Many started out this year with the goal and the hope of reading through the Bible. And some of you have done it. And that's a great thing. And others, well, you've spent more time than you've perhaps ever spent in the Bible. And that too is wonderful. So good on all of you for being here, for spending the time, for investing the time into your soul. You've invested in some soul care in 2022, and I trust and hope that you'll continue on with those habits into the new year and into the rest of your life. The Bible really is good news when we read it with the lens of Jesus, when we invite him to open up our hearts to experience his presence and his love for us and for the world. That's what this podcast is sought to be about and will continue by God's grace to be about that very thing in 2023. Well, friends, as you can guess, we are in the book of Revelation chapters 19 through 22. Father, thank you. Thank you for your faithfulness. Thank you for your care over us. Thank you for your presence in us. We're grateful, Father. Help us to see here on this final day who you are, what you've done, and what we have become. Revelation 19. After this, I heard what sounded like a vast crowd in heaven shouting, Praise the Lord! Salvation and glory and power belong to our God. His judgments are true and just. He has punished the great prostitute who corrupted the earth with her immorality. He has avenged the murder of his servants. And again their voices rang out, Praise the Lord! The smoke from that city ascends forever and ever. Then the twenty-four elders and the four living beings fell down and worshipped God, who was sitting on the throne. They cried out, Amen! Praise the Lord! And from the throne came a voice that said, Praise our God, all his servants, all who fear him, from the least to the greatest. Then I heard again what sounded like the shout of a vast crowd, or the roar of mighty ocean waves, or the crash of loud thunder. Praise the Lord, for the Lord our God, the Almighty, reigns. Let us be glad and rejoice, and let us give honor to him, for the time has come for the wedding feast of the Lamb, and his bride has prepared herself. She has been given the finest of pure white linen to wear, for the fine linen represents the good deeds of God's holy people. And the angel said to me, Write this, Blessed are those who are invited to the wedding feast of the Lamb. And he added, These are the true words that come from God. Then I fell down at his feet to worship him. But he said, No, don't worship me. I am a servant of God, just like you and your brothers and sisters who testify about their faith in Jesus. Worship only God. For the essence of prophecy is to give a clear witness for Jesus. Then I saw heaven opened, and a white horse was sitting there. Its rider was named Faithful and True, for he judges fairly and wages a righteous war. His eyes were like flames of fire, and on his head were many crowns. A name was written on him that no one understood except himself. He wore a robe dipped in blood, and his title was the Word of God. The armies of heaven, dressed in the finest of pure white linen, followed him on white horses. From his mouth came a sharp sword to strike down the nations. He will rule them with an iron rod. He will release the fierce wrath of God, the Almighty, like juice flowing from a wine press. On his robe at his thigh was written this title, King of all kings and Lord of all lords. Then I saw an angel standing in the sun, shouting to the vultures flying high in the sky, Come, gather together for the great banquet God has prepared. Come and eat the flesh of kings, generals, and strong warriors, of horses and their riders, and of all humanity, both free and slave, small and great. Then I saw the beast. 
And the kings of the world and their armies gathered together to fight against the one sitting on the horse and his army. And the beast was captured. And with him, the false prophet who did mighty miracles on behalf of the beast, miracles that deceived all who had accepted the mark of the beast and who worshipped his statue. Both the beast and his false prophet were thrown alive into the fiery lake of burning sulfur. Their entire army was killed by the sharp sword that came from the mouth of the one riding on the white horse, and the vultures gorged themselves on the dead bodies. Revelation 20 Then I saw an angel coming down from heaven, with a key to the bottomless pit and a heavy chain in his hand. He seized the dragon, that old serpent who is the devil, Satan, and bound him in chains for a thousand years. The angel threw him into the bottomless pit, which he then shut and locked, so Satan could not deceive the nations any more until the thousand years were finished. Afterward he must be released for a little while. Then I saw thrones, and the people sitting on them had been given the authority to judge, and I saw the souls of those who had been branded for their testimony about Jesus and for proclaiming the word of God. They had not worshipped the beast or his statue, nor accepted his mark on their foreheads or their hands. They all came to life again, and they reigned with Christ for a thousand years. This is the first resurrection. The rest of the dead did not come back to life until the thousand years had ended. Blessed and holy are those who share in the first resurrection. For them the second death holds no power but they will be priests of God and of Christ and will reign with him a thousand years. When the thousand years comes to an end, Satan will be let out of his prison. He will go out to deceive the nations, called Gog and Magog. In every corner of the earth, he will gather them together for battle, a mighty army as numberless as sand along the seashore. And I saw them as they went up on the broad plain of the earth and surrounded God's people in the beloved city. But fire from heaven came down on the attacking armies and consumed them. Then the devil who had deceived them was thrown into the fiery lake of burning sulfur, joining the beast and the false prophet. There they will be tormented day and night forever and ever. And I saw a great white throne, and the one sitting on it. The earth and sky fled from his presence, but they found no place to hide. I saw the dead both great and small, standing before God's throne. And the books were opened, including the book of life. And the dead were judged according to what they had done, as recorded in the books. The sea gave up its dead, and death and the grave gave up their dead, and all were judged according to their deeds. Then death and the grave were thrown into the lake of fire. This lake of fire is the second death, and anyone whose name was not found recorded in the book of life was thrown into the lake of fire. Revelation 21 Then I saw a new heaven and a new earth, for the old heaven and the old earth had disappeared, and the sea was also gone, and I saw the holy city, the new Jerusalem, coming down from God out of heaven like a bride beautifully dressed for her husband. I heard a loud shout from the throne saying, Look, God's home is now among his people. He will live with them and they will be his people. God himself will be with them. He will wipe every tear from their eyes and there will be no more death or sorrow or crying or pain. All these things are gone forever. And the one sitting on the throne said, Look, I'm making everything new. And then he said to me, Write this down, for what I tell you is trustworthy and true. And he also said, It is finished. I am the Alpha and the Omega, the beginning and the end, to all who are thirsty. I will give freely from the springs of the water of life. All who are victorious will inherit all these blessings, and I will be their God, and they will be my children." But cowards, unbelievers, the corrupt, murderers, the immoral, those who practice witchcraft, idol worshippers, and all liars, their fate is in the fiery lake of burning sulfur. This is the second death. Then one of the seven angels, who held the seven bowls containing the seven last plagues, came and said to me, Come with me, 
I will show you the bride, the Lamb of God. So he took me in the spirit to a great high mountain, and he showed me the holy city Jerusalem, descending out of heaven from God. It shone with the glory of God and sparkled like a precious stone, like jasper as clear as crystal. The city wall was broad and high, with twelve gates guarded by twelve angels, and the names of the twelve tribes of Israel were written on the gates. There were three gates on each side, east, north, south, and west. The wall of the city had twelve foundation stones, and on them were written the names of twelve apostles of the Lamb. The angel who talked to me held in his hand a gold measuring stick to measure the city, its gates and its walls. When he measured it, he found it was a square, as wide as it was long. In fact, its length and width and height were each 1,400 miles. Then he measured the walls and found them to be 216 feet thick, according to the human standard used by the angel. The wall was made of jasper, and the city was pure gold, as clear as glass. The wall of the city was built on foundation stones inlaid with twelve precious stones. The first was jasper, the second sapphire, the third agate, the fourth emerald, the fifth onyx, the sixth carnelian, the seventh chrysolite, the eighth beryl, the ninth topaz, the tenth chrysophus, the eleventh jacinth, the twelfth amethyst. The twelve gates were made of pearls, each gate from a single pearl, and the main street was pure gold as clear as glass. I saw no temple in the city, for the Lord God Almighty and the Lamb are its temple." And the city has no need of sun or moon, for the glory of God illuminates the city, and the Lamb is its light. The nations will walk in its light, and the kings of the earth will enter the city in all their glory. Its gates will never be closed at the end of the day, because there is no night there, and all the nations will bring their glory and honor into the city. Nothing evil will be allowed to enter, nor anyone who practices shameful idolatry and dishonesty but only those whose names are written in the Lamb's Book of Life. Revelation 22 Then the angel showed me a river with the water of life, clear as crystal, flowing from the throne of God and of the Lamb. It flowed down the center of Main Street. On each side of the river grew a tree of life, bearing twelve crops of fruit, with a fruit crop each month. The leaves were used for medicine to heal the nations. No longer will there be a curse upon anything. For the throne of God and the Lamb will be there, and his servants will worship him and they will see his face, and his name will be written on their foreheads, and there will be no night there, no need for lamps or sun, for the Lord God will shine on them and they will reign forever and ever. Then the angel said to me, Everything you have heard and seen is trustworthy and true. The Lord God, who inspires his prophets, has sent his angel to tell his servants what will soon happen. Look, I am coming soon. Blessed are those who obey the words of prophecy written in this book. I, John, am the one who heard and saw all these things. And when I heard and saw them, I fell face down and worshipped at the feet of the angel who showed them to me. But he said, No, don't worship me. I am a servant of God, just like you and your brothers, the prophets, as well as all who obey what is written in this book. Worship only God. Then he instructed me, Do not seal up the prophetic words in this book, for the time is near. Let the one who is doing harm continue to do harm. Let the one who is vile continue to be vile. Let the one who is righteous continue to live righteously. Let the one who is holy continue to be holy. Look, I am coming soon, bringing my reward with me to repay all people according to their deeds. I am the Alpha and the Omega, the first and the last, the beginning and the end. Blessed are those who wash their robes. They will be permitted to enter through the gates of the city and eat the fruit from the tree of life. Outside the city are the dogs, the sorcerers, the sexually immoral, the murderers, the idol worshippers, and all who love to live a lie. I, Jesus, have sent my angel to give you this message for the churches. 
I am both the source of David and the heir to his throne. I am the bright morning star. The spirit and the bride say, Come. Let anyone who hears this say, Come. Let anyone who is thirsty come. Let anyone who desires drink freely from the water of life. And I solemnly declare to everyone who hears the words of prophecy written in this book, If anyone adds anything to what is written here, God will add to that person the plagues described in this book. And if anyone removes any of the words from this book of prophecy, God will remove that person's share in the tree of life and in the holy city that are described in this book. He who is the faithful witness to all these things says, Yes, I'm coming soon. Amen. Come, Lord Jesus. May the grace of the Lord Jesus be with God's holy people. And now may God give his blessing to the reading of his word. Amen. It's only just begun. Even as we conclude this story, we see that a new story is just beginning. A new creation is coming, a new heaven and a new earth, a new city, a new Jerusalem with new citizens. Composed of all the nations, and these nations will walk in the light of God. They are enveloped in His light. They are His children of light. Today, as we consider these great mysteries, let's be sure of this. This story that we're living right now has an end point. There is a conclusion that God is bringing it to, but it just doesn't end with a conclusion. No, now we see that there is still more to come. In fact, the best is yet to come. And that can be a great reminder and a great comfort to our souls as we see certain chapters of our own lives come to their conclusion. We can rest assured that God is not done. There's still more to come. Because with Him we have life. We have life abundant. And He promises to be with us through all of the seasons and the chapters of our lives, even as He has been this year. And all that it brought, all its challenges, its misfortunes, its victories, and its joys. And he will continue to be with us as we walk into this next chapter, 2023. All that will unfold, we do not know, but we do know this, that God is with us, that he is good, and that we are loved. The prayer of my own soul today is that I will live in the light that I will respond to the one who is the light of the world, the one who has come to give himself, that I might know him, that I might be free, that I might experience his peace and his joy. That's the prayer that I have for my own soul. That's the prayer that I have for my family, for my wife, my daughters, and my son. And that's the prayer that I have for you. May it be so. Well, dailyradiobible.com is our home base out here in these interwebs, and that is where you are always welcome to stop on by. We'd love to hear from you. We'd love to find out who you are, where you're from, how you stumbled upon the podcast. All of it. It's just good news for us. Did you finish? Did you make it through the year? Did you do the whole Bible? Or did you do most of the Bible, more Bible than you've ever done before? Whatever you did, we would love to hear how it went for you this year. So if you've got a moment, you take it and you let your brother Hunter know. There's different ways you can do that. You can email me at hunter at dailyradiobible.com. You can also leave us a voicemail by going to the webpage and clicking on the voicemail link, no matter where it is in the world you're at. Always love hearing your voices, your accents. (laughs) Whatever way it is that you choose to get in touch with us, we just want to say thank you for that. We love hearing from you. Tomorrow, we will have a new year in front of us. A new beginning, a new start, a chance to do it again. And I hope that you join us on that journey through the Bible once more. 
Now is a great time to invite your friends and family and co-workers and even your enemies to join us on this journey. Lots and lots of people often have that goal of reading through the Bible in a year. And lots and lots of people can't seem to quite make their way through it. And I understand that. And that's why this podcast, in part, exists. That's why I am your Bible reading coach, because I'm going to show up with you each and every day. And we're going to do this together. And not just with me, but with people all around the world who are joining in, who are digging in, who are opening up to the God who is love, the one who's come to walk with you every day of your life. So in the words of Frank Sinatra, start spreading the news. <laughs> well, hey, friends, before I let you all go today, I just want to thank you all for being a part of this. Many of you have shared this ministry with people in your life. Many of you have reposted our posts. You have told your spouses and your friends and your co-workers. You have spread the news. You have written reviews and you've followed and subscribed and all that good stuff. And many of you have been able to give in order that this ministry can do what it continues to do. And for all of that, I'm so grateful. We are honored and we are humbled and we say thank you. And for those of you who are still considering your end of year giving, well, today is the day. And you can give to us by simply going over to the webpage, dailyradiobible.com, and clicking on the partner link. Well, hey, your presence here has made you a partner. And we are so glad for all of you. And tomorrow, we're going to do it again. Day number one. 2023, we will begin our 10th time through in our journey through the Bible. Until that time, let's go forward. Let's go forward in God's joy. Let's let his joy be our strength. And let us always remember this, that you are loved. No doubt about it. Alrighty, I'll talk to you again tomorrow. You guys take care. Bye-bye.